is able to do much more than we ask and we pray that is who our God is. Amen? And nothing can stop him. There is no power in this world that is greater than the power of his name. Amen? The Bible says in Ephesians, you know, God exalted Jesus Christ and seated him high above every power, every authority, every dominion, and every name that could be named in this world, which means there is no name that is greater than the name of Jesus Christ. Amen? You know, every challenge has a name, right? Recession is a name. Poverty is a name. Sickness is a name. You know, the challenges that you face, everything has a name. But my God has exalted the name of Jesus Christ above every name that has been named in this world. Amen? That is the power of the name of Jesus Christ. And if you believe in Jesus Christ, you should know that you are not any way lesser that to enjoy all the goodness of God that comes through faith in Jesus Christ. Amen? Because of your faith in the name of Jesus Christ, you are empowered. You have empowered. You are qualified. You are made worthy to receive all of his goodness through that name which is above all other name. Amen? So focus on the name of Jesus Christ not on the name that the world names about your challenges and your problems. Amen? Focus on the name of Jesus Christ. And when you know the name of Jesus Christ, which is powerful than any other name in this world, nothing can stop you. Nothing can hold you back. Amen? You will be on the go. You will be on the move. When God called the children of Israel, he told them, just go. He didn't tell them, Evaluate the armies that is behind you. He didn't say, calculate the Red Sea that is ahead of you. He didn't say anything. He told Moses, ask the children of Israel to go. And I'm here telling you, in the place of Moses, standing in front of you and telling you, you are called to go. Not to sit and research on the name that has been given to you. This is what you're going through. This is your problem. This is your disorder. You know, the names that has been given, you don't evaluate that. You need to focus on the name that can disqualify the power of this name that you have in your hands through reports, through mails, through messages, through texts. That name is greater. Amen? What a powerful name we have. We've been talking about God's wisdom. And today... I want to go a bit deeper into God's wisdom and, you know, reveal what it is to function in God's wisdom. I mean, how it benefits us as believers in Jesus Christ. You know, when you talk about wisdom, it is not a faculty of the mind. Reasoning is a faculty of the mind. Understanding is a faculty of the mind. Revelation, in a way, is a faculty of the mind. Knowledge is a faculty of the mind. But when it talks about wisdom, wisdom is never a factor that the, where mind is involved. It is from the spirit. Amen? Wisdom is more from the spirit. That's why God calls the wisdom as a spirit of wisdom. Amen? If you turn with me to Ephesians chapter 1, verse 17, it says, I keep asking that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the glorious Father, may give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation. What is Paul asking for you and me? He's saying, God, give your people a spirit of wisdom. He's praying that over you. He's asking the Father God, saying, God, Give your people spirit of wisdom. Turn to the person next to you and tell them, I have a spirit of wisdom. You have a spirit of wisdom. It is not a faculty of the mind. It is spiritual. Amen. It is not intellectual. It is not human being. It is not carnal in nature. It is spiritual. Amen. That's why we need to, I mean, we need to understand, we cannot 
wrap our mind around wisdom, we need to receive it by faith. Wisdom could be received only by faith. Amen? It cannot be learned. It cannot be taught to you. It has to be received by faith and function in it. It's just like this. How we believe that I'm healed by his stripes and I manifest that wisdom, manifest that healing. Same way, we need to understand God has deposited inside of me in my new creation reality a spirit of wisdom and I need to believe it. I need to acknowledge it. I need to endorse it and I need to manifest it in my day-to-day -day life. It is a spiritual blessing given to you. You know, let me show you some more why, to differentiate how it is spiritual. Turn with me to James chapter 3. Book of James chapter 3. Verse 13 onwards. Who is wise and understanding among you? Let him show it by his good life, by deeds done in the humility that comes from wisdom. Who is wise and understanding among you, let him show it by his good life, by deeds done in the humility that comes from wisdom. Okay, now look at this. But if you harbor bitter envy and selfish ambition in your heart, do not boast about it or deny the truth. Now he's saying, but if you harbor, if you work, you know, if you, uh, uh, if you build up, if you labor to create envy, selfish ambition in your hearts, do not boast about it or deny the truth. Where it is saying, you are harboring bitter envy, you know, selfish ambitions. Where? Where is it starting from? In my heart. You know, where does the spirit work? It works in your heart, right? It works in your heart to control your mind to the truth. You know, it is here. It is not here. What works here makes your mind to think evil. Do you get it? Okay, let me read further. So it says, uh, such wisdom does not come from heaven. Do you get it now? It makes you harbor bitter envy, selfish ambitions, you know, pride, jealousy, all these things. It does not come from heaven, but is earthly, unspiritual of the devil. And the next verse says, For where you have envy and self-ambition, there you find disorder and every evil practice. So what I'm trying to say, wisdom is spiritual. Because it is spiritual, God can influence wisdom and even the devil can influence wisdom. You get it? When God influences, the spirit of influences you with the spirit of wisdom, you know, the next verse says, but the wisdom that comes from heaven is first of all pure. What will be in your mind, the thoughts that runs in your mind will be pure. Okay? The things that you want to do will be pure. Your actions will be pure. Your conversation will be pure. You'll be careful with your words. You'll be careful with your actions because it is God who works that wisdom inside of you. It is God who influences your mind through his spirit, through the wisdom that is working inside of you. Then peace-loving, considerate, submissive, full of mercy and good fruit, impartial and sincere. So many things, right? It's saying, let's read it slowly. But the wisdom that comes from heaven is, first of all, pure, peace-loving, considerate, submissive, full of mercy, good fruit, impartial, and sincere. You look at the quality of a good person here. You look at the influence of a good person here. Right? But when it comes from devil, it will be Harboring selfish ambitions, bitter envy, jealousy, pride, anger, you know, every kind of wickedness and evilness. That's what it will produce. The wisdom that comes from the devil. But you and I 
are saved people who believe in Jesus Christ, who believe in God's goodness, who was saved by faith. So what is working inside of us is a spiritual wisdom, God's wisdom given, into, given to us through the new creation that we have become by faith in Christ Jesus. So I have God's wisdom inside of me. Amen? So what is the work of wisdom? Okay? What is, I mean, wisdom in another uh, word is enlightenment. Wisdom in another word is enlightenment. Or you can call it, wisdom is a light of God in me. Amen? Say it. What is wisdom? Wisdom is a light of God in me. Spiritual wisdom is a light of God in me. Let me show you another verse in Job 33. I think it's Job 33. Turn with me to Job 33. Verse 8, but it is a spirit in a man, okay? It is a spirit in a man, the breath of the Almighty. What is the Holy Spirit? Is the breath of the Almighty. The breath of the Almighty that gives him understanding. It is the spirit in a man, the breath of the Almighty, gives him understanding. Okay, now let's come back to this. Wisdom, you can simplify it by saying, wisdom is a light of God in me. Amen, say it. Wisdom is the light of God within me. Wisdom is is enlightenment. So what is the function of wisdom? If you go back to Ephesians chapter 1 verse 17, it says, I pray to God that he may give you a spirit of wisdom and, what does it say? Wisdom and revelation. You know, it should be read like this. It is wisdom for revelation. It is a light of God in me. What does the light do? Revelation means, you know, unraveling of mysteries and secrets. Unraveling the mysteries of life, the secrets of life, and that is what wisdom does. And being, having the spiritual wisdom, it unravels the secrets about you, the secrets about your tomorrow, the secrets about God's plan over your life, the secrets about God's purpose over your life, God's determination over you. That's what wisdom does. It is a light of God in me. It is a spirit of God. It is a breath of Almighty. It is an enlightenment. I have through the Holy Spirit which reveals secrets and mysteries. That's what revelation is. In another word, revelation I already told you. Wisdom is not a faculty of the mind, but revelation is a faculty of the mind. Wisdom is not a faculty of the mind, but it is a manifestation of God in me. Wisdom is a manifestation of God in me. The spirit of God working inside of me. Showing light. Throwing light into secrets and mysteries. So what happens? This wisdom as a light of God helps my mind to confirm to God's secrets and mysteries about my life. Amen. Amen. Wisdom confirms my mind. Confirms my mind. Persuades my mind to God's secrets and mysteries about me. You know, that's why, you know, we, you, we read in uh, James chapter 3, right? See, we saw two kinds of wisdom acting there. Okay, one from the devil, one from above. And there, the thing that comes from devil, it shows light how to function in great evil, right? But the wisdom that comes from above, it throws light into how to be at peace, how to be a peacemaker. 
how to be considerate, how to be merciful, how to be patient, how to be, you know, loving. We have, we don't have the spirit from the devil. We don't have wisdom from the devil. We walked in it. We were driven by it. But being saved, having faith in Jesus Christ, in the, because of the new creation that you are, you are deposited. You are deposited. It has been given to you the wisdom which is from above, which shines in you, showing light to God's mysteries and secrets. Amen? Let me show you some more verses. Okay? Turn with me to Luke 1 verse 17. Gospel of Luke 1 verse 17. Wisdom is the light of God in you, revealing the mysteries and secrets. Amen? Isn't it exciting to know that you cannot live being stuck in a place anymore. You cannot say, I don't have answer to my questions. I don't have answer to my problem. I don't know why I'm here. You can never have an excuse to say all these things. You, because, the thing is, you know, wisdom, what does it do? It changes your mindset. It changes your mind. Or in another word, it sets your mind. Right? Uh, let me show this verse. 1 verse 17, and he will go on before the Lord in the spirit and power of Elijah to turn the hearts of the fathers to the children and the disobedient to the wisdom of the righteous. Ooh, it's powerful. You know, it is talking about the ministry of John the Baptist and he's saying he will turn the disobedient to the wisdom of the righteous. So what do you and I have? Wisdom of the righteous. Okay? Who is the disobedient? It is you only. Let me tell you. When I say disobedient, it is not in your action. You know, many times, I mean, that's what the world is. world looks at everyone's obedience and disobedience through actions. But when God looks at obedience and disobedience, it is through faith. God looks at your disobedience not through action. He looks at your disobedience by what you believe. But what you set your mind to. But what you confirm. That's why Bible talks about be transformed by the renewing of your mind. So here, John the Baptist, you know, the ministry that has been given to him is this. To turn the disobedient to the wisdom of the righteous. So now turn with me to Hebrews 3, verse 18. Hebrews 3, 18 says, Unto whom did God swear that they would not enter his rest? If not to those who disobeyed. Who? Disobeyed. Okay. And now the next verse gives the explanation for disobedience we see. So we see that they were not able to enter because of their Action? Is it because of their action? No. It is not because of their action. It is because of their unbelief. They didn't believe. In another word, they didn't set their mind on the promises. They didn't set their, they were not able to set their mind on God's goodness. They were not able to accept God's goodness. What does it talk about? You know, Moses calls the 12 spies and tells them, go into the promised land, spy how great and good the promised land is. So 12 spies go and come back. When they come back, 10 spies bring evil reports saying, that land is too big for us, too great for us. It will subdue us. It will kill us. But whereas two, the Bible says, they were of a different spirit. What were they? Of a different spirit. It is talking about Joshua and Caleb. It is saying, they were of a different spirit. In another word, the spirit of God and the spirit of unbelief. The spirit of God worked in them to believe, reveal the mysteries, reveal the secret saying, you, God will give this to you. 
But whereas these people, they were not moved by the spirit of God. They were moved by the carnal mind. They were moved by unbelief, which produced evil words. What were those evil words? We won't be able to get it. It won't happen for us. We are like grasshoppers. And God is saying, they disobeyed. How did they disobey? By not setting their mind. Here, John the Baptist is turning the disobedient to the wisdom of the righteous. So what happens now? You being righteous, when you recognize the wisdom of God in you, when you recognize the wisdom of God in you, it sets your mind into the mysteries and the secrets of God about your life, about God's blessings, about prosperity, about healing, about health, about promotion, about progress, about all these things. It sets you up to believe in it. Those two had a different spirit. So what was working inside of them? The spirit of God, the light, the enlightenment that convinced their mind they had a revelation. It convinced their mind to believe that they will be able to take this land. They will be able to possess this land. Though it is great, though it is big, though it is, you know, uh, humongous, they were great giants living there. They will get it. What convinces their mind? It is a different spirit living inside them, operating inside them. And that different spirit is inside you, showing light, convincing your mind, helping you to set your mind on victory. You know, some people have a very bad mindset, negative mindset, pessimistic all the time. Some people have angry mindset. You cannot touch them. Touch me not mindset. Sensitive. And some are insensitive. These are all mindsets. You know. And this wisdom is given to change all those mindsets. To believe God's goodness and greatness. Amen. Do you have the wisdom of God? You're supposed to say yes. Do you possess God's wisdom? Yes! You have it! No more excuse. Amen? No more ordinary life. No more, you know, below power life. No more life and struggle. No more, you cannot be stranded anymore because you are, you, you have a, uh, you know, you know the jump start. You have an advantage. I don't know who, uh, whether Usain Bolt uh, got the gold yesterday in his hundred meters. Did anyone know? No. Okay. See, it's like this. Asking Usain Bolt to start at the starting line, and you are twenty-five meter closer to the finishing line. That's where you start, and that's where he starts. No matter how fast he is, amen? No matter how talented he is, he can never get to you. Because all you'll have to do is few strides. And he has to do, take so many strides with that much pace, with that much effort. But you, so closer to the finish line, all you'll have to do is just jump and go there and finish it. And that is the advantage you have over the world because of God's wisdom. They don't know the secrets. They don't have the ability to understand the mysteries. But you have. So when your life is stranded, you don't look at your life and say, I don't know what's happening. You can go there. Go to that place and say, because of God's wisdom in me, I will receive a revelation and understanding in my mind to know what is happening. It cannot convince a natural man, but I am a spiritual man. It will convince my mind. I will let that convince my mind about my tomorrow and I will finish it. Amen. Let me show you something else about Daniel. Okay. How? I mean, we'll continue. I'm almost done. 
my time is up. Daniel, uh, turn with me to Daniel. Daniel is a slave boy in Babylon, but he is in the king's court because of God's wisdom in him. Okay, one day the king dreams a dream and then he tells the wise men of Babylon, listen guys, I dreamt I had a dream last night and I want you to give the interpretation. So all these wise men came saying, wise men, you know, they know how to play with your mind. So they told Nebuchadnezzar, sir, please tell us a dream and we will give you the interpretation. But this guy is a Pagal king. Okay? He tells him, I'm not going to tell you the dream. But I want you to tell me the dream and the interpretation. <laughs> Can you believe this king? He's telling you, I had a dream. And you need to tell me the dream and the interpretation which will convince me. Not only the dream and also an interpretation that will convince me. Doesn't it look horrendously stupid? To say, I dreamt, you will tell me the dream and the interpretation. And now he's saying, if you don't tell me the dream and the interpretation, every wise man will be killed. So he commands his commander, go kill all the wise men. So Daniel, her, he's one of the wise men now. You know, his life is at stake along with his friends, three guys, four all together. Then he tells the commander saying, uh, why is a king? Let's read that, you know. Uh, verse 14 of Daniel 2, when Arioch, the commander of the king's guard, had gone out to put to death the wise man of Babylon, Daniel spoke to him with wisdom and tact. Look at Daniel. He's speaking with wisdom and tact. See, wise men know all this. How? Because of the understanding they have. They know how to gauge the situation. They know how to gauge the time. They know how to gauge and be sensitive to people's needs. So he is speaking with wisdom and tact. Saying Daniel spoke to him with wisdom and tact. He asked the king's officer, why did the king issue such a harsh decree? Adriok then explained the matter to Daniel. At this Daniel went to the king and asked for time so that he might interpret the dream for him. He's saying, going to the king and telling him, king, give me time, I will do it. Give me time, I will do it. He has the guts. Because he know who his God is. That's why, you know, he wrote a word, uh, Daniel. In the book of Daniel, there is a word that says, They that know their God shall be strong and do great exploits. See, when you know who your God is and what he has given to you, you will not be perplexed by your challenges and, and the, uh, you know, the troubles that comes your way. You will be, you will act with wisdom and tact towards that and you will handle it. And he's telling him, I will do it. Why? Because he knew who his God is. He knew his God is a God who reveals mysteries and secrets. So he go, calls his friend, and then they all are praying. During the night, verse 19, it says, During the night, the mystery was revealed to Daniel in a vision. Who? Who revealed it? Who revealed it? God. He had to pray. Can I tell you your advantage? You're closer to the finish line. You're starting, you're having a head start. You're closer to the finish line. He had to pray. All his four friends had to pray. But you, you have been given the spirit of wisdom. You have it. God revealed the mystery, which is the dream and the interpretation in a dream. Then Daniel is praising. Praise be to the name of God forever and ever. Wisdom and power are his. And verse 22 says, He reveals deep and hidden things. He knows what lies in darkness and light dwells with him. He knows what lies in darkness and light, which is wisdom, dwells in him. And that is the light he has taken and deposited inside of you. So darkness can never 
have its influence over your life. Mysteries can never have influence over your life. Secrets can never influence your life. What dwells within him? Light. That's why Jesus said, I'm the light of the world. If you believe in me, you will never walk in darkness. In another word, your future can never be an obscurity. You will never be oblivious to your tomorrow. You will be sure. Your mind will be sure because your mind is confirmed to God's secrets and God's mysteries about you. Amen. Now look at uh, King Nebuchadnezzar. He's saying in verse 46, then King Nebuchadnezzar, you know, now Daniel goes and interprets the dream, telling him the dream. I'm sure Daniel, Nebuchadnezzar, sitting in his throne, his knees would have gone wobbly. His mind would have been fogged so much. His eyes would have teared up. His, you know, he would have had goosebumps all over. Because there is a guy standing in front of him telling him what he dreamt on his bed and also giving him an interpretation. He would have shaken to wits there. And listen to what he's saying. Then the next thing, the king who told all the wise men will be put to death, it is saying, then King Nebuchadnezzar, next time, in the next minute, he is all down in all his royal robe, with his crown flying all over the place, you know, with his ornaments just breaking everywhere. He is falling before Daniel, saying, fell prostrate before Daniel and paid him honor and ordered that an offering, an incense be presented to him. Daniel is sitting there. What is happening there now? Honor. He's, he's saying, my crown belongs to you now. He's clothing him with ornaments. Incentives. You want incentives? Wisdom. <laughs> Promotion? Wisdom. Increment? Wisdom. Secret is the light of God inside of you. Your boss will come and fall before you. So no so tomorrow don't go expect your boss to come and fall before you like that you know they will submit to you saying boss you know what to do do it just like how Potiphar knew nothing in his house saying he knows what to do let him do it when he went to the prison he knew what to do same way they will come to you saying you know how to handle it it is not you it is wisdom inside of you Amen. It will reveal every mysteries and secrets about all the challenges you face. And the next thing he is saying, surely your God is a God of gods and the Lord of kings and revealer of mysteries for you were able to reveal this mystery. Then the king Daniel placed Daniel in a high position and lavished many gifts on him. He made him ruler over the entire province of Babylon and placed him in charge of all its wise men. That's it. I'm done. It's your time to go from ordinary to extraordinary. To excel. It's time to be a vessel of excellence. If you can hold on to this. You might not understand as soon as you see the problem. But when you see the problem, don't panic. Don't panic. Recognize the light of God in you, which is wisdom. It enlightens the function of this wisdom being the light of God is to reveal. Instead of your mind panicking, let your heart take control of your mind. Let light take control of your mind. And you will be given, you will be prompted to do the right thing. Take the right action. Speak the right word. Give the right counsel. It is very spiritual. You cannot understand with your human mind. But if you can acknowledge it, endorse it, you will live it out from being below par to be a person of excellence, from being sublime. I mean, you'll be above 
extraordinary. You have this time to walk. Receive it. Receive it. Receive this light. Nothing will be a mystery anymore. There won't be any mysteries about your future, about your marriage, about your job, about your family, about your children, about your finances. No more mysteries. It will walk in light about how your tomorrow is going to be. You'll be at the right place at the right time. Father, I pray and I declare your people will walk and live their life in the effect of wisdom. In the effect of wisdom, Lord. I pray that the wisdom of the righteous which has been given to us will convince every disobedient mind to obedience. Persuade every disobedient mind to obedience. I speak it as a blessing over everyone. When they come back next week, let them come back with testimonies of victories and goodness. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, and amen.